Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the month of July, outlining some of the key events that will be taking place during the month, along with the overall spiritual themes that we'll be exploring um, during the course of July. Before I outline the different events and go through into more detailed explanation, I just want to clarify, as I do on the videos, that the astrology doesn't control us in any way, shape or form. It merely helps us to understand what the spiritual energies around us are doing, what kind of spiritual lessons are available for us to be learning at this particular time and how can we potentially make best use of this or what can we potentially learn from these transits to empower us going forwards. Now in terms of the key events for the month of July, there's quite a few um, going on. So we have initially on the 4th, we have Chiron sorry, turning retrograde in Aries and Chiron will remain retrograde until the 8th of December. But in that period, Chiron will initially start in Aries and move backwards into Pisces in September. The next event in July is on the 10th. This is when Jupiter turns direct in Scorpio. The next is on the 13th, the, we have the solar eclipse in Cancer. So this will open the eclipse um, window for us where a lot of things um, take place, a lot of change starts taking place and we often find that new beginnings are initiated but also certain things come to an end in life because they no longer serve us. The next event after that is on the 22nd, the Sun moves into his home sign of Leo. On the 26th, Mercury turns retrograde in Leo and will remain retrograde until about the 19th of August. The next day on the 27th we have a lunar eclipse in Aquarius and lastly on the 31st Vesta turns direct. Now in terms of the Sun's transit in all this time we'll have the Sun in Cancer for the first 22 days of July so this is a time of exploring our internal landscape, exploring our emotions and feelings and also looking at the way we nurture um, both ourselves and other people. But for, it's also about looking at where's our old conditioning or past conditioning affecting the way we emotionally respond to situations. Where is our emotional response actually being generated by an old response that was created in childhood and at some level a situation that we're in resembles something in childhood and that's why we're responding that way. The emotional response may be completely inappropriate for the nature of the situation that we're in. So a key part of a son's passage in cancer is about helping us to shine a light on the conditioned emotional responses and see where these responses um, generated in response or where these emotional reactions generated in response to a thought or a memory from the past and how can we create a gap between the two so that if that thought or memory does arise we don't automatically have emotional reaction to it and how can we allow our emo or become more present with our emotions and make sure that our emotions are based on our current situation and not the past so with cancer this is an opportunity for us to shed all conditioning that's tied that's come over from childhood, his cancer has a strong connection with um, our past and specifically childhood and how can we release this conditioning so that our emotions are more fully in the now or are more based on reality as it is rather than how we perceive it is because of conditioning and how can we break free of that fear, like fears of getting hurt that causes to lock our emotions away to shut down but equally, how can we become more aware emotionally so that, or um, in touch with our emotions, so that we flow with the emotions but we're not controlled by them? So, this is about imagine a river, the banks contain the, emo the water, which is the emotions, the river still flows smoothly. So, the emotions are contained but they're not suppressed. So, the emotions flow smoothly, we're not caught up in the chaos of them and we can feel them but we're not controlled by them and we're not swept along by them um, uncontrollably so that we end up behaving irrationally because when we can become more aware of our emotions in this way and connect with them 
it becomes easier to be emotionally responsive towards other people, to be emotionally present with them. And it's also, cancer deals with nurturing, so it's also about how well do we nurture ourselves, how well do we nurture our emotional nature, and make sure that the emotions are free to be felt and to express themselves, but they're not, they don't control us, we control them in the sense that we feel them, but we're not swept along by them. And if we can do this, then we become much better able to be present in our lives, to have suitable emotional response to situations that allow us to know what feels right for us and what doesn't, but not be um, blinded by emotions either. And obviously in the second half, um, so from the 22nd of July onwards, the sun will be in his home sign of Leo. This is all about things like emotional warmth and generosity towards one another. It's also about our self-expression and our creativity. Because Leo deals is all about that divine creative force. But a key part of this is learning to not identify with it, to connect with it, allow that force to flow through us and to generate creative projects based on it. But we recognise that the creativity is not our own, it's something that we're channeling in order to create something new. It's also about, it's with cancer going, is all about exploring the roots of who we are and getting to the psychic basement if you like, and knowing who we are at heart and feeling at home within ourselves, of feel, feeling comfortable within our own skin. Leo is then the expression of that core sense of self. It's going from gazing inwards to radiating outwards. So the work of cancer is necessary in order for Leo to operate its higher functioning. Same way that for cancer to be at its best we have to do the work of Gemini as well. So that each one leads from the other. But with Leo we're looking at can we um, express ourselves authentically? Are we comfortable or are we in touch with our creative potential or is it buried somewhere hidden away? And if we're not in touch with it, how, how can we first connect with the spark of creativity and then how can we nurture that spark so it becomes a fire rather than just a spark waiting to be lit? So for the sun in Leo, it's a time for us to work on our authentic self-expression of being who we are rather than pretending to be something. But as I said, it requires that we do the, first, the work of the first half of the month with the sun in Cancer of getting in touch with the, the core of who we are, of feeling our emotions and connecting with the self so that we achieve that inner stillness and inner peace. And then from there, we connect with that creative energy which naturally flows through us once the mind is cleared of the conditioning. Now in terms of the other events I mentioned, on the 4th of July, Chiron goes retrograde. This is a time where you may become more conscious of wounds to the self and with it starting in Aries this is the wounds to the ego or the sense of I am so what I mean by that is it's time to pay attention to what choice of words we use after we say the words I am because I am is an identity statement whatever we say after us after the words I am basically defines who we are to other people and to ourselves so if we're using negative self-talk so we're saying things like I'm bad or I'm inadequate or I'm stupid or I'm not worthy then that, we then that becomes gets mirrored back to us so if we want to change that we have to change our own um, the way we talk to ourselves and we have to change the way we um, perceive ourselves so it's learning to move beyond self-definition and breaking free of any limiting ones that cause us to act small or to not embrace our full potential and instead change um, us the way we speak to ourselves so that we use empowering language and loving language that will allow us to heal and achieve a great degree of wholeness because we feel comfortable within ourselves and confident expressing ourselves of being who we are and asserting ourselves as well um, but there, I'll do another video on this um, to go into more detail because there's yeah, and Chiron Retrograde will be back tracking to Pisces later on, which will change the flavour of it. As I was mentioned earlier, Jupiter turns direct on the 10th. So this is a time where 
Jupiter has been retrograde for the past four months or so and ideally this would be a time where we would have been exploring our shadow, exploring our power drives, exploring our nature, relationship with power, but it's also a time of working on forgiveness because the thing is if we don't, you, forgiveness is often misunderstood, it's seen as something that's weak because we're not seeking any kind of revenge for wrongdoing. However, the thing is, we, forgiveness is actually an act that we do for ourselves. It's something that allows us to liberate our minds from past events and past hurts, allows us to rise above emotional um, pain and emotional obsessions, and it allows us to rise above old conditioned thought patterns. Now with Jupiter turning direct, all of that expansive energy that's been turned inwards for the past four months is you know, suddenly directed outwards again. So the key thing we need to be mindful here is with that sudden outwardly directed energy again, we need to make sure we don't project any of the issues we've been working on onto other people, otherwise we're not going to learn anything from it or we've just wasted the retrograde as it were. So when we do feel that sudden increase in energy levels again as Jupiter's expansive energy turns outwards once more, it's important that we're careful in how we express this, ex this expansive energy that we make sure that we remain humble and we don't allow the ego to become inflated by this sudden burst of energy and we make sure that we don't project our own shadow onto other people. Now as I mentioned before, we have a solar eclipse in Cancer on the 13th that will start to feel the build up of the energy from around about the 6th onwards because you usually feel the energy about a week before the eclipse season starts. So this is a time where when the solar eclipse happens, a window opens up which is like the past and the future um, collide. So if we want to move into the future, we have to clear out the past. So, but the thing is, this is a solar eclipse. This is more about the new beginning side of it rather than the emotional releasing. And with the North Node in Leo at the moment, this solar eclipse in Cancer is more like a four taste of what we may be experiencing from November onwards when the North Node moves into Cancer and the South Node into Capricorn. So it's worth paying attention to what comes up in our lives around this time when the solar eclipse in Cancer happens because this may give us an idea of what kinds of things we may be working on when the North Node is in Cancer. But this is essentially about connecting with our feelings, connecting with our emotions, being able to nurture ourselves and nurture other people and give provide that emotional warmth and empathy towards one another. But this requires that we've cleared out our psychic basement to begin with if you like. So we're not it's learning to be connected with our emotions. So if we're someone who tends to be emotionally shut down or emotionally um, dis or connected or disconnected from our emotions, then the solar eclipse may bring experiences that kind of prompt us to get in touch with these emotions and to get more in touch with our internal landscape rather than just pushing into the world externally without focusing on our internal landscape. So during this time, if we already connect with our emotions, then we can serve as an example to the people of being in touch with our core self and shedding emotions that are holding us back. If however we're someone who struggles with this, then this is an opportunity for us to learn these um, particular lessons so that we can be in touch with our emotions and we can understand our internal landscape. So the next event after the solar eclipse in Cancer, as we've already gone through the Sun's passage through Leo on the 22nd, but that will be the next event. After that, we have Mercury turning retrograde in Leo. So Mercury will enter his pre-retrograde shadow about two weeks before. So the fortnight before the 22nd, so just before the eclipse essentially onwards, we may feel that need to, or may get indications from the world around so it's time that we need to slow down because it's time to work on awareness again so with Mercury going retrograde in Leo and it'll be entirely within the sign of Leo it's not going to touch any of the sides, signs either side of Leo this is a time for us to reflect on our emotions and or not emotions our creativity and how well connected are we to our um, creative potential or creative gifts it's also Leo is about self-expression so it's reflecting on how do we express ourselves 
are we being authentic? Are we connected with our creative energies or do we feel cut off from them? And how can we develop greater spontaneity in life? So rather than doing everything by rote or doing everything by a very set pattern, is how can we become more spontaneous? How can we allow that spark of creativity to become a fire that warms us and but warms the people around us? And how can we develop um, a great understanding of our creative abilities or how can we create, connect with that divine creative force that flows through us or is there for us to connect with but for many of us we've forgotten how to do that. So it's, I will do another video on this later on close to the time to go into much more detail but basically Mercury retrograde um, starts on 26th and will finish in around about the eight, 19th sorry, of August so during the next three weeks from the 26th, this is an opportunity for us to work on ourselves, to connect with our creative abilities, to reflect on how well um, do we express ourselves authentically or do we, are we operating from behind a mask so we don't really know who we are. So this is an opportunity for us to reflect on our creative potential, but it's not really time for um, trying to pursue any new action at this point because Mercury retrograde is a time of reflection, it's a time to become more aware of things in, buried in our unconscious and, and learning to incorporate them into um, how our mind works and we achieve a greater holistic um, or greater degree of wholeness mentally. And then the day after Mercury turns retrograde we have a lunar eclipse in Aquarius. Lunar eclipses tend to be more linked with um, the past or linked with endings. There's a time of reflecting on what in our lives has served its time, what is, and what can, do we need to now let go of in order to bring in and or initiate new beginnings at the solar eclipse in August. So what we're looking at here is Aquarius is about issues of breaking free of rigid thinking. So it's Aquarius is, or the south node is in Aquarius, so the lunar eclipse is a south node eclipse. And this is one that asks us to see where we hold ourselves back through rigid thinking and where do we need to break these mental thought forms, where do we need to break free of the current level of consciousness to embrace a more expansive one, and where do we have a very kind of separatist kind of way of thinking or perceiving things and how do we need to work on understanding how we interconnect with everything else around us so everything we do is important because it has the potential to impact the collective around us so for us to but for us to understand this we have to work on expanding our minds so that we can see things from a bigger whole um, kind of perspective if we don't seek to expand our horizons mentally and try to understand how everything is interconnected then we'll inevitably carry on taking actions which could potentially cause harm elsewhere which then brings karma back on ourselves. So it's achieving that humanitarian level of awareness where we understand that our actions have the potential to help or harm other people so we need to be mindful of the actions and visions that we pursue and make sure that they're actually beneficial both for ourselves and for the communities that we're part of so that through working on ourselves and becoming better versions of ourselves and more empowered the community around us naturally benefits from us being stronger individuals but like anything else it requires us to do the work it's not something that's just going to happen magically you can't just wave a magic wand and it happens we actually have to work on ourselves and do that internal work of breaking free of rigid thought patterns, of limited perception and to understand or elevate our consciousness through perceiving things from a more inclusive mindset and a more expanded one that allows us to look down at the interconnectedness of everything and recognise that we need to be making sure that the actions we take honour the uh, essential unity of life rather than desecrate it like a lot of current human action is at the moment. And then the last thing I mention is Vesta turns um, direct. She's been retrograde first in Capricorn but is currently in Sagittarius. And this is a time of reflecting on our integrity. So 
are we prepared to say no to things that may seem good but will actually undermine our spiritual integrity or undermine our sense of self and are we prepared to um, stay stand our ground and make sure that whatever we're doing honors us honors the um, core of who we are but it's obviously not becoming egotistic in the process it's making sure that what we're doing is um, spiritually honorable is allows us to maintain our integrity but it's also looking at where do we have a tendency to just slide through things or just let things slide and not really focus on doing things for the right reasons where do we say the easy option rather than the right option because sometimes the easy options may be tempting but they may actually cause us harm in the long run sometimes we have to take the harder um, road in order to become strong individuals and more able to help the people around us but this can only happen if we're staying true to who we are if we don't stay true to who we are and just um, be anything that people want us to be then we're not really going to be in a position to help people because we don't even know who we are to begin with with Vesta turning direct now the time of reflection is essentially over it's time to make to apply whatever lessons we've learned during the course of the past few months of Vesta retrograde and make sure that whatever we're doing is in alignment with who we are we're being true to who we are and when people see us or meet us it's a case of what this is and what they get we're not pretending to be something that we're not that's easier said than done with all the social pressures around us to be something that we're not but the only thing that can the only way it can really help people is to be authentic in the first place so there's a lot to take on board for July it's a very yeah, busy month the overriding theme of this is going to be a month of change of transformation and by virtue of the eclipse season and, and in some, to some respects car and retrograde it's a month where we need to break free of uh, the past to break free of old conditioning and to embrace a more empowered sense of self a more in connected sense of self and a more loving sense of self so that we can love ourselves and love one another and to nurture one another when people are struggling as long as we're not trying to um, over nurture so the person doesn't learn anything or doesn't grow themselves it's a month of learning to be true to who we are to thine own self be true and if we can do all this if we can grow through these um, different challenges and this rapid change of energy that will happen throughout the month then by the end of July we'll, we'll have had an opportunity to become significantly more empowered to more um, self-reliant and more connected with the core of who we are so we have a clear understanding of who we are and how we can break through of old conditioning so that we're no longer responding to events based on old events we're actually responding to them based on what's happening now rather than their similarity to something in the past so i hope this coming month brings you many lessons and much growth and transformation. Take care and be blessed.